Welcome back to the Roseland Ballroom. I'm Randy Gordon along with Steve Farhood. Our next bout is coming up in the Super Bantamweight division. That's 122 pounds, six rounds. Let's go up to ring announcer Dean Stone. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout of the evening is scheduled for six rounds in the featherweight division. Your referee in charge of the action, Pete Santiago. Introducing first in the blue corner, wearing blue and black, weighing in at 122 and one half pounds. His professional record, three victories with no defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, from Brooklyn, New York, presenting Fari Kamba. His opponent across the ring in the red corner, wearing yellow and red, weighs in at 122 and one quarter pounds. His professional record, one victory, with three defeats and one draw. Ladies and gentlemen, De Jalisco, Mexico, now fighting at a new Rochelle, New York, presenting Antonio Jalapeno Olivero. Well, getting set for this six-round bout in the Super Bantamweight division. That's just below featherweight and just above Bantamweight. One of the great featherweights or Super Bantamweights of all time come to mind. Wilfredo Gomez, who really made his name, who made his start in the Bantamweight division, moved up to 122 and was knocking out so many people at 122. And here we go. Antonio Oliveros in the yellow and Fari Kaba in the dark trunks. Kaba out of Brooklyn, New York and Oliveris out of New Rochelle by way of a place called Mexico. Pretty strong start for both guys. Bombs away with the right hands. I love the little guys because you don't have the big, big punch unless, of course, you're Wilfredo Gomez or maybe these guys who are just getting unleashed on the boxing world. But you do have a lot of punches and a lot of action. But Randy, don't you think it's a misconception that the lighter weight guys don't hit hard? Because you look at like, the bantamweights, Carlos Zarate, Ruben Olivares, Alfonso Zamora, look at their knockout records. They knocked out everybody they ever fought, basically. So I don't know if I buy that you know, these guys don't hit as hard as heavyweights, relatively speaking. That's why we have the mythical title, punch for punch and pound for pound. There's no question about it. When these guys are throwing those bombs with those eight ounce gloves on, and sometimes even six ounce gloves, I have to believe that, again, pound for pound, they hurt more than a heavyweight shot. Well, one thing about Olivares in the yellow trunks, he fights like a typical Mexican fighter. He's been coming forward all the way. Well, Kaba out of Brooklyn better be ready for that because Mexicans know how to fight basically only one way. And that's not forward, that's with heart. That right hand got Kaba back in the fight fast. He senses he has Oliveras hurt. Well, let me tell you, in the first 60 seconds, there's been more action so far in this fight than you see in many other fights over six or eight rounds. Kaba sharp shooting with that jab. That's a good idea, because Oliveras is walking in. And if you're going to discourage that forward progress, a jab is the best way to do it. Oliver, oh, those tremendous body hooks. You rarely see body hooks like that. He went about two or three times to the body with those hooks. Yeah, I'm talking about discouraging Oliveris' forward progress. A left hook to the liberal will do it a lot better than a jab will. <laughs> six rounds. These guys are fighting at a fast pace. But the beauty of a six-round fight, of course, they can maintain this pace. I don't know, Steve. This is a brutal pace. If these guys can keep this up, you've got one of the just lesser fights. I mean, it's not a championship fight, actually. But it's a six-round bout. If they keep it up, I mean, I love action like this. And I said the fans do, too. As we wind down round number one in a non-stop first round. Don't go away. Can't get enough of Joe DeGuardia's star boxing? 
Download the Star Boxing TV app or check out our Roku channel to watch exclusive content and classic fights. Every punch, every knockout, every screen. The Star Boxing TV app gives you exclusive access to every moment of Joe DeGuardia's Star Boxing. Available on Apple, Android, and Roku. Just search Star Boxing to get in the ring. And we're back with round number two from the Roseland Ballroom in an action-packed first round. It was Antonio Olivares against Fadi Kaba. Olivares in the yellow trunks, Kaba in the dark trunks. It was non-stop action. If you're scoring that one at home, who in the world do you give it to? Steve, how did you have it? I gave it to Kaba, but I, you know, they, Olivares made the round. He came forward just like he's coming forward now. His technique is not as good as Kaba's. His punches aren't very straight but he's applying a lot of pressure. A couple of those body shots Kaba through though was so brutal that that's why I gave him the first round. Let's see if Olivares can keep up that pressure. One thing about Olivares in the yellow, he keeps walking straight in, cranking up those arms a la a little George Foreman from, George, uh, George Foreman from the 70s. Look how he cranks up the arms. And as he does, he leaves himself wide open to the fast-handed Kaba. There's nice work with the left hand by Kaba. Kaba should be picking his spots. There's no reason for him to brawl like this. In and out, hit him, step out. Step to the side, don't back up straight. And keep that jab going because that will eventually wear down Oliveras. No question about it. Oliveras has definitely come to rumble, not to box. Kaba with his back to the ropes, taking a tremendous body licking from Oliveras. Referee Pete Santiago has to tell Kaba, keep him up. Nice right hand by Kaba. That was his best punch in the first round as well. Randy, one thing I'm impressed with, these guys very rarely in six round fights or four round fights do you see both fighters go to the body this judiciously. These guys are really work in the body as much as they work in the head. You know, you and I have known each other a long time. We've, we've written a lot of stories over the years and talked a lot about body punching. And both of them, as you say, are hitting the body. And that's very unusual for two young beginning fighters. Kaba in the dark trunks, 3-0 record. Antonio Olivares, unbelievably, with a record of one win, three losses, one draw. I'd like to see the guys who beat him. Yeah, he's been matched up, wouldn't you say? <laughs> and once again, he certainly has no cakewalk in front of him. This is what club boxing is all about. This is how guys actually get better. If you don't get better fighting the Sammy Laney down, if you will. And right now, Randy, the reason Kaba is landing the bigger shots, although he's not the busier fighter, but he's landing the bigger shots, he throws straighter punches than Oliveras. Final second of round number two. Again, nothing but action. Referee Santiago getting between them, and here's the bell. Hey, boxing fans, come out for live boxing. Joe DeGuardia's Star Boxing presents Rock and Fights. For ticket information, go to starboxing.com or Ticketmaster.com. See some of the best young fighters. Star Boxing, Rock and Fights, it's a knockout. We're back for round number three. These are Super Bantamweights, 122 pounders, six rounds. Antoni, Antonio Olivares in the yellow trunks, Fadi Kaba in the black. Time has been didn't have his mouthpiece, Rand. Mouthpiece. And in the state of New York, you're not allowed to start a round without your mouthpiece. Steve, we were talking last round about uh, Olivares with that incredible 1-3-1 and one record. And Fowry Kaba 3-0. I mean, at this point in his career already, Olivares might be getting a little discouraged knowing how good he really is with a losing record. Uh, he came up from Mexico. Now he fights out of New Rochelle, New York. I'll tell you, in Mexico, they turn pro very young. 
amateur program is not as important down there. And you wonder if fighters are able to develop the way they should. I mean, this guy's a pro now, not the youngest of guys, but he, he's, you know, he probably didn't have the chance to develop as an amateur. And he's a hardened pro already after only five fights. Now, do you talk about them in Mexico turning pro very early? If I recall, I might be off by a year. Former welterweight champion from back in the mid 70s, Pepino Cuevas, the WBA champion. I believe he turned pro at the age of 14. 14, uh, and Marco Antonio Barrera, I think, was 15. So there you go. Oh, he was an old guy. Yeah. <laughs> Now what happens is I think they do develop, but as Pepino Cuevas once told me, he said, I think we burn out quicker than other fighters. For sure. A little better defense by Caba now. He's keeping his gloves up. I don't know how many punches have been thrown here so far, but if you look at it, that there's 180 seconds in every round in three minutes. These guys combined are, I would say, throwing at least 180 shots combined. I would agree. Where's Bob Canobio when you need him? <laughs> if Cobb just keeps his hands up, picks his spots, he'll win this fight. The action's slowing, but even at the slower pace, it's faster than most fights we've seen recently. And not an easy fight to score because... Not at all. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's clear who the aggressor is. Olivares is the aggressor. But I think Cobb is throwing the better punches. So it becomes what do the judges like. Right on top of each other, in close. Cobb really not taking too many steps backwards as Olivares comes in. That time he caught him with a counter right hand. Cobb moving nice now, the side to side, not running, but stepping back, boxing very beautifully. T tough to miss Olivares. He comes in with it, when he throws those body punches, he comes in with his hands low and his chin up in the air. Can't get enough of Joe DeGuardia's Star Boxing? Download the Star Boxing TV app or check out our Roku channel to watch exclusive content and classic fights. Every punch, every knockout, every screen. The Star Boxing TV app gives you exclusive access to every moment of Joe DeGuardia's Star Boxing. Available on Apple, Android, and Roku. Just search Star Boxing to get in the ring. We're back from the Roseland Ballroom in Midtown Manhattan. I'm Randy Gordon along with Steve Farhood, round number four, super bantamweights. Before any more punches are thrown, Steve putting you on the spot. How do you have it scored between Olivares and Caba? Well, Randy, I have it 3-0, but I would be surprised if the judges have it the same way. I have Caba winning every round by a very slight Ooh. margin. You agree? Very close. I think Olivares in the yellow might have won one round, making it two to one. In New York State, they score in a 10-point must system. That means the winner of the round gets 10 points, nine or less to the loser. When I was chairman of New York, I loved my judges to use those points. In other words, when there was a round that was close, make it 10-9. A right. bigger round, make it 10-8. And in a monster round, hey, make it 10-7. Well, you're 100% right. And, and this is the kind of fight where you could see 10-9. Uh -huh. But for the most part, I don't think the, the system is used properly. Because if I out-jab you 3-2 to two over the course of a round, I win the round 10-9. If I beat the you-know-what out of you, and you fight back a little bit, I win the round 10-9. That's not right. So in your book, you've got the man in black, Fari Kaba, winning by a score of 30 to 27. So far, a uh, six-round fight. But again, I wouldn't be surprised if, based on his aggressiveness and some of that body punching, Olivares hasn't been given at least one round. Oh, these guys are just not letting up. They're relentless. If anybody's doing a little bit of backwards movement, it's the man in black, Fari Kaba, who you have winning, as he continually catches his opponent walking in. The very tough Antonio Olivares. In the center of the ring. Kaba's uh, corner told him not to lie on the ropes. They don't want him on the ropes. They don't want an infight. But it's tough when you're getting pressure like this not to make it an infight. 
Referee Pete Santiago, I think one of the finer referees in boxing. He lets you work. And he was able to make that transition from the amateurs where he spent such a long time. He has become quite a fine professional referee. And it's very tough when an amateur referee turns professional because remember, in the amateurs, you have a standing eight count. Oh, yeah. And he cannot use that standing eight count, which all the commissions, the Association of Boxing Commissions, have done away with. In the amateurs, there's so many little rules that the referees have to know. The fighters are always being warned for something. It's a much different game in the pros. Steve, still no let up. Over and over again, these guys are strafing each other. Final seconds of yet another action-packed round. No let up. Antonio Olivares, Fadi Caba from the Roseland Ballroom on Star Boxing. And surprise of surprises, it is round number five. Super Bantamweights, Antonio Olivares in the yellow, Fari Kaba in the black. These guys have been on each other all night long. Well, you talk about a learning process for a young fighter like Fari Kaba in the blue trunks. This is a learning process. You really can really take away a lot from a fight like this. I know one thing you're going to take away. They're both going to take away a lot of bruises. Oh, yeah. Tomorrow morning, they are going to hurt in places where they never knew they had places. They are hitting each other, not just in the midsection, but on the biceps, the shoulders, the sides, the hips. They're going to have black and blue, I'm telling you, all over. Twice this round already, Randy Kaba has been caught on the ropes. He's got to stay away from the ropes. You see, he wants to box. He wants to change angles, jab, keep a distance. You see him backing up there. But by doing that, sometimes all it does is give Olivares a chance to come forward and uh, make it look like he's dominating the fight even more. I'm very impressed with what I see of Farid Kaba. He has handled himself very well in the face of tremendous pressure. Well, he's keeping his hands up. That's good right there. You see that. But he's got to stay off the ropes. There he is on the ropes again, and he spins off, which is what he should be doing. And if this fight, Randy, isn't an, isn't an example of why records in boxing mean nothing. I mean, you know, this guy's one and three. I'm sure they could have found Kaba, an opponent, who was four and oh, who would have been a pushover. And you and I have said for so long, forget about the records. Just forget about the records. If you look at the guy's record, you see, even if he has a losing record, that he's been losing those close decisions or whatever, giving everything he's got. And indeed, this man has. Antonio Olivares, with that 1-3-1 one, one record in the yellow and red, has put up one tremendous effort so far. Sure. I, you know, it's how you lose, and it's the mentality you have. A lot of guys start to lose, and they develop either sparring partner mentality, or they look to lose. This guy is trying to win. No doubt about it. Once again, they are just relentless, nailing each other with shots that really you don't see that much. Hard body shots. It's the body shots that stay with you. It's the head shots that are impressive. It's the body shots which stay with you. Let's grab on the ropes again. Final seconds of round number five. Hey, boxing fans, come out for live boxing. Joe DeGuardia's Star Boxing presents Rockin' Fights. For ticket information, go to starboxing.com or ticketmaster.com. See some of the best young fighters. Star Boxing, Rockin' Fights, it's a knockout. This is the 
sixth and final round. We are back for the sixth and final round of a fight I swore could not go six long rounds. I'm Randy Gordon along with Steve Farhood from the Roseland Ballroom in Midtown Manhattan. We've got Antonio Olivares in the yellow trunk, Fari Kaba in the black, and this one has been bang, bang, bang since round number one. And Olivares still working the body. He won't give up. I mean, he's very committed, Olivares in the yellow, to a body attack. Now he's finally switching his attack. I think he may feel that he's behind at this point, starting to look for those head hooks, looking to take Kaba out of there, winging those shots. All right, it's going to be real interesting if this goes to a decision. It looks like a will. It's going to be real interesting to see what the judges have to say, Randy. I have Kaba ahead, but... You know, it's the kind of fight where because of Olivares' aggressiveness and nonstop punching, judges might see it differently. And let me tell you, I, I think you've started to shut out for the man in black. I, I gave, uh, I've given, since we last asked, I, I have given uh, Olivares one round. So basically, even though it's a one-sided fight on your scorecard, and that's what the numbers would show on your scorecard, it's what I call a competitive mismatch. Oh, indeed. I mean, because if you just look at the scores alone, what I think the scores will probably be, it is going to be, if you look at it a year from now, you're going to see the Kaba probably wins it one-sidedly. That certainly does not tell the real story of this fight, which from round number one has been toe-to-toe -to -toe action in a fight that I would take any day of the week. Great prelim fight. And interesting what Cobb is doing. I like what he's doing this round. He's trying to finish strong. He's trying to push Olivares back this round. And he's doing it. He's the one coming forward. Now fighting him in his own game. And of course, just as I say that, he gets back to the ropes. <laughs> but Kaba, for the first half of the round, this last round, he's been making the fight, pushing him back, and they are still punching nonstop. They are in incredible condition. I've seen world-class contenders in less condition than this. Steve, I don't know how much they're getting paid, but it's not enough. <laughs> This is one of those fights where I would love to see the crowd throw things. Dollar bills. <laughs> Looking a little sloppier this round because there's been more infighting. That's exhausting, of course, too, because you're pushing, you're pulling. Anybody who's ever, if they're watching and wondering how much energy it takes, put on those gloves, get into a gym, and go 40 minutes on a heavy bag, which is not hitting you back, and see if you can stand on your feet. And then have Here somebody... we go, final bell coming up, there it is! Great prelim fight, Randy. Unbelievable fight, Steve Farhood is putting his pen to his paper, our unofficial score, but Steve Farhood doesn't count. The men who do count, Ronnie McNair, Georgie DeGabriel and Bob Gilson, three of New York State's, forget New York State, three of the best judges in this country. The decision is in their hands. And we'll be back for that decision in just a moment. Can't get enough of Joe DeGuardia's Star Boxing? Download the Star Boxing TV app or check out our Roku channel to watch exclusive content and classic fights. Every punch, every knockout, every screen. The Star Boxing TV app gives you exclusive access to every moment of Joe DeGuardia's Star Boxing. Available on Apple, Android, and Roku. Just search Star Boxing to get in the ring. Judges have their scorecards marked. Let's throw it up. Up. They're still getting one tabulation. This the is taking a while. Yeah. Over know. the scorecards. This is taking a while. Double and triple check. When I was commissioner of New York, I was the one who did the scorecards. I didn't let anybody else do it. I had to do the scorecard. I remember you sitting there with an abacus. 
Nine, my fingers, 18. my toes. But you got them right. Steve, I just didn't trust anybody else to, and I couldn't have it done. I wanted to do it myself, and for seven years, I did it myself. It's the way it was. And, and it's really not that hard. You know, you got 10, you got nine, and you add them up. Go figure. Other states seem to have that problem. Well, let's see what's going on here. I think uh, our ring announcer is ready. Is he ready? He's still looking. He's still taking notes. Wow. Wow, maybe it's not, uh, you had it what, for uh, I had for I had it 59-54 for Cabo. Maybe it's not that one-sided. Well, let's, let's take a look. Let's throw it up to our ring announcer, Dean Dreamstone. Ladies and gentlemen, after six rounds of boxing here at the Roseland, New York City, we go to the scorecard. Judge Ron McNair scores the bout, 58-57 Cabo. Judge George DeGabriel sees the bout, 58-56, Oliveros. And Judge Bob Gilson sees the bout, 58-56, for your winner by split decision, Antonio Jalapeno Oliveros. Well, I wonder if you were scoring at home, if you had Oliveros for winner, it was an incredible fight, Steve. I don't care who won that fight. I want to see a rematch. I want more. I'm not through with this fight yet. Hey, I thought Cabo did the better punching, but the Oliveras did more punching and was the aggressor. Obviously, that won the judges over. Well, Jim Borzell, our maker at Star Boxing, did an incredible job. Unbelievable. Well, what a fight that one was. From the opening bell, Antonio Olivares ups his record to two wins, three losses, one draw. Fari Kaba drops his very first fight. He's now 3-1, and one, and Steve, I want a rematch. I want more. I'm not through with that fight yet, and I must give it to Jim Borzell, our matchmaker at Star Boxing. What a job he did in putting that one together. Great fight, Randy. Kaba, I thought, did the more effective punching. The judges preferred Olivares' aggressiveness. I don't have a big problem with the decision. No question about it. It was Antonio Olivares over. Fari Kaba on decision. We'll be back with more. to the ring right now is Tom Cameron. And earlier today, we had a chance to sit around and talk with him about his feelings, about the nice bout against David Taylor. I'm not scared to get hit, and I'll take it punch to give a punch, you know what I mean? I just go right in there and get it on. Well, the ripper, I, some people try to call me, I just said I rip them up, you know, I have to have some very hard punches, and uh, just... It was great to fight home, you know, in my hometown because I get a lot of support and I want to be recognized as a New York fighter, just like the New York Yankees and the New York Mets and uh, the Knicks. I want to be their New York fighter and uh, I'm going to put on a good show for them tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout is Joe DeGuardia's star boxing featured bout of the evening. It is scheduled for eight rounds in the cruiserweight division. Your referee in charge of the action, 
Arthur Mercanti. Introducing first in the blue corner, wearing gold and black, weighing at 176 and one half pounds. He has fought in 28 professional fights. Ladies and gentlemen, from Willington, Delaware, presenting the IBU Super Middleweight Champion, Tom the Ripper Cameron. His opponent across the ring in the red corner, wearing the multicolored trunks, weighs in at 178 and one half pounds. His professional record, 23 victories. 19 coming by way of knockout with three defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, from Port Chester, New York, presenting the man known as TDT, David Devastation Telesco. Okay, Steve, let's uh, take a look at that tail of the tape between these two. They call them cruiserweights, but technically, come on, these guys are light heavyweights. Good evening, gentlemen. You received the rules well, earlier tonight by the New York State Athletic Telesco is Let's the bigger nice guy. Fight. Don't Touch let the weights fool you. He's only got a two-pound weight advantage. I'm impressed with the fact that Telesco is 178 and a half, hasn't fought in so long, yet he's only three pounds over the light heavyweight limit. But Cameron is really a blown-up middleweight, super middleweight. So that's the big difference in the tail of the tape. And, of course, Telesco with the outstanding record, he's the much harder puncher, too. Here we are, round number one, scheduled for 10 rounds. Fasten your seatbelts, this one could be over quick. Telesco comes right out, nails him. Cameron Hurt already, down he goes. Referee Alder McCanny sends him to a neutral corner on the count of three, four, five, six. McCanny's in his face. It does not look, can he make it, can he make it, it's over. A quick, devastating knockout, just caught him cold. Cameron got hurt with the first punch that really landed, couldn't shake it off, and this one is over quickly. Randy, and he just slumped to the floor. Yeah, if you're wondering if he's hurt, he slumped. Mercani lifted him right up. Steve, here it comes. Wow, that left hook to the body might have been the, the subtle shot that really did Cameron in, but that looked like a super middleweight or middleweight against a light heavyweight. Telesco was a much harder puncher and Cameron couldn't deal with it. It was a splinter in there against David Telesco. It, there's a different angle here, Steve. Let's take a look at it and analyze it from this position. Those bombs that were thrown, especially that first body shot. Yeah, one thing's for sure. Telesco came out with the intent of looking good, making a statement and scoring a quick knockout. And against a fighter who had three straight wins, he did just that. You just can't look any better than that. You know, he was a bit disappointed, a bit is an understatement. He fought Roy Jones Jr. about a year and a half ago as they opened the doors to boxing at the famed Radio City Music Hall. And in the fight, it just wasn't the David Telesco you saw tonight. For whatever went on, he said he let his anger against Roy Jones, he had built himself, worked himself up into a frenzy over the past few months. And he took that fury into the ring. And instead of letting it drive him, he let it burn him up and consume him. And for 12 rounds, he fought very un-David Telesco-like. The announcers were all over him from HBO. They condemned him for the fight virtually. And quite frankly, it really wasn't Telesco, and he did deserve to get knocked. He brooded for a while. He's back tonight. You saw what he did. Let's go up to ring announcer Dean Stone and make this one official. Ladies and gentlemen, the time is 23 seconds of the very first round. Your winner by knockout, the man known as DDT, David Devastation Telesco. Well, we've got a lot going on in that ring right now. We've got David Telesco up in the ring holding his daughter. And look who is joining the champ right now the legendary Diana Ross. And let's see if we can get Steve to bring the champ Diana Ross over to him. Those pictures first, nothing like pictures. A very happy moment for David Telesco. And right now, Diana Ross walking over and giving Tom Cameron a big congratulatory hug.
Diana Ross trying to run out of the ring. She came up, a big boxing fan, I think a little bit scared of Steve Farhood, but he is standing by right now with David Telesco. Let's go up to Steve. Thank you, Randy. David, it looked like you really wanted to come out here and make a very, very quick statement, which is exactly what you did. Uh, you know, uh, off of my last fight with Jones, uh, that was my game plan to come out and to attack. But mentally, I wasn't in the ring prepared mentally. And uh, today, I just wanted to make a big splash and show people that I'm, I'm willing to work my way back to get that world title fight with uh, Joe DeGuardi to help me out. Well, only three pounds over the light heavyweight limit. Coming off that big a layoff, I think that's impressive, and it said you were in good shape. Well, thank you very much, but I don't feel that was long, a long layoff. I've done a four-year layoff, so 16, 17 months is nearly as close as nearly as close to four years. When we watched the replay, it looked like there was one shot in there that may have been a little subtle, a left hook to the body. That looked like it took everything out of him, even if that wasn't the shot that put him down. Did you feel that punch? Uh, I didn't feel anything. I was just going out like a bull and just don't let my punches go, let my hands go. I know I'm a heavy Once puncher. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, we'd and like just, to thank you know, for premium hoping that one of those punches will stop him from, this from fighting. We thank you. Also, we Joe like DeGuardia, David's promoter. You have to be happy with this, but what's in the future? Well, we're going to keep him busy. He's going to stay busy. He's going to come back. It looks like we're looking at one for next month. Um, he's scheduled also for August 30th down in Tampa County, Atlantic City. He's going to stay busy. He's going to stay active. He wants a title shot again, and he wants to show that there's a lot more to David Telesco than that was seen in the Roy Jones fight, and there is. David, one last question from me. If you get another title shot, obviously that's what you're hoping for. Would you like it to be Jones, or would you like it to be somebody else? Well, obviously, uh, it wouldn't matter. My dream was to capture the light heavyweight division, but I'm also willing to go down to super middle fight, middleweight, fight Bernard Hopkins and whoever else is there for me. So it doesn't matter as long as I, I, be, I become world champion in one of the one of the divisions. But more more than likely, the light heavyweight division. David Telesco's back, looking real good. Quick knockout. Let's quickly go back to Randy Gordon. Thank you very much, Steve. Great job also up there by David Telesco, blasting out his opponent in seconds, Tom Cameron. David Telesco now 24 and 3, 20 knockouts, and Roy Jones is in his sights. Don't go away, we'll be back for a wrap.